In the last lecture, we have seen the reservation controlled access protocol. In today's lecture, we will see the polling controlled access protocol. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we have three outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will know the various multiple access protocols. Outcome number two, we will understand the controlled access protocol, polling. And the last outcome is, we will know the efficiency of polling method. Before we go into the polling technique, we will start with the multiple access protocols. We know there are three multiple access protocols, random access protocols, controlled access protocols and channelization protocols. In the last lecture, we have seen the reservation method. In today's lecture, we will see the polling method. We will start polling with an analogy. Let us assume there is a class full of students. Teacher will call the roll number of the student and know the attendance of the student. Here, the teacher is the master or the controller. The teacher will create an ambience so that all students are involved in the class activities without any collision or chaos. Even if there is no teacher in the class, someone in the class must be elected for management purpose so that there will be no chaos or collision in the class activities. Now we will move on to the concept. The concept here we are going to address is polling. And why we are dealing with this technique? Because we don't want collision to happen. In a shared medium, there are multiple stations that can access the shared medium at the same time. Obviously, collision will be the result. To get rid of collisions, we have some protocols. Random access protocols, controlled access protocols and channelization protocols. And today we are talking about this polling protocol. In the analogy, we have seen someone should be elected or there should be a teacher in order to coordinate everything for the smooth execution. Likewise, the polling protocol requires one of the nodes to be designated as a master node or a primary station. And the role of the master node is, the master node polls each of the nodes in a round robin fashion. So this master node only is going to poll each of the stations in a round robin fashion. So that this master node will give chance for every node to transmit their data. In particular, the master node first sends a message to node 1 saying that node 1 can transmit up to some maximum number of frames. So it is now giving turn to node 1 to send some number of frames. After node 1 transmits some frames, the master now tells node 2 to transmit up to some maximum number of frames. So if we observe point number 3 and 4, previously it has given chance to node 1, now it is giving chance to node 2. So the master node can determine when a node has finished sending its frames by observing the lack of a signal on the channel. If there is no signal on the channel, the master node can determine that the node has finished sending the data. So this procedure will continue till all nodes have transmitted their data. So this procedure continues in this manner with the master node polling each of the nodes in a cyclic manner. It means the master node will be giving chance to every other node to send their data. Thus, polling ensures there is no collision. So, this polling protocol eliminates collision by using this approach. And this scheme, that is this, allows polling to achieve a much higher efficiency. The advantages are it eliminates collision and we can achieve some higher efficiency. But there are some drawbacks associated with polling technique. We will see what are they. The first drawback is that this protocol introduces a polling delay. That is, the amount of time required to notify a node that it can transmit. And it is obvious, the master node must poll every station in order to transmit the data. Every time this delay is a new one. For example, the master one first it has to give chance to node one. Then it has to give chance to node two, node three, node four and node five. And this has to be continued. So polling delay is inevitable in this scenario. And the second drawback is, which is potentially more serious. That is, if the master node fails, the entire channel becomes inoperative. We know in polling approach, there is a master node or the primary station. And this is responsible for giving chance to other nodes so that the entire channel is used by all the nodes involved in the transmission without collision by giving opportunities to every node in a cyclic fashion. What if the master node fails? If the master node fails, the entire channel becomes inoperative. So that's the second drawback. Let's see an animation. It will be more clear for you to understand. 
In this example, how many nodes we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. As mentioned, some node will be elected as a master node. Let's assume this is the master node. Now what this master node does? First it has to pull some node and it gives chance for that node to transmit the data. Once done, it has to choose other node to send the data. Likewise, this process should be continued. Just watch this animation. Now it is choosing this node. Now this node will start transmission. After that, this master node will elect the next node. Then it gives chance to other nodes in a cyclic manner. And this continues till all the transmission is getting completed. I hope now you understand what is polling. Now we will see what are the important functions that are associated with polling. Basically, polling is associated with two functions. Function number one is the poll function. We know who is going to use this poll function. It is obviously the master station. So if the primary wants to receive the data, it asks the secondaries if they have anything to send. And the second method is the select function. If the primary wants to send data, in this case, if the master wants to send data, it tells the secondary to get ready to receive. So these are the two functions that are used in the polling method. We will now see the efficiency of this technique. We know there are two delays or times associated with polling. Number one, every node wants to transmit. So obviously transmission time is there and the master node will be polling every node. That is this master node has to choose a node so that it should notify that it's the turn of that node to send the data. And this has to be continued in a cyclic manner by ensuring that every node is getting opportunity. So there are obviously two delays. Let T poll be the time for the polling and TT be the time required for transmission of data. Therefore, the efficiency of polling technique is TT divided by TT plus T poll. In other words, TT upon TT plus T poll. I am not going to derive this in this lecture. I want you to know that the efficiency of polling is TT upon TT plus T poll. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the various multiple access protocols. We understand the controlled access protocol that is the polling technique or polling protocol and we know the efficiency of polling. I hope you like the video and thank you for watching.